Welcome to the Land Your Bet Sports Betting Show. On to play a props here for week nine in the oh, NFL. Yeah. Dieter in the house just got done with our tutties as well. So make sure you check out the tutties episode if you want to see six anytime touchdown plays. How are you feeling about this week's props, my guy? Yeah, I feel pretty good about them. A weird week for props, right? Because the books are, they, they know exactly what's going on with these guys now. I don't feel like there's a tremendous amount of value to be had when we're coming to props because you have so much data to work with. So yeah. uh, a little bit harder to parse it out. I don't know if I feel uber confident about any of these. I'll just be forthright about it. Okay. But I do feel, two of them I feel pretty damn good about. And uh, one of them. Us posted, will you keep us posted on your levels of confidence as we go through this then? You know, on a scale of one to one hundred, I'm about seventy eight out of hundred right. uh, overall, and we'll, I'll, I'll I'll go through accordingly, and yeah, uh, maybe I'll put on a blood pressure monitor or something. We can get some live data on it. As well. Yeah, that's a really good point. Whenever Dieter starts sweating, we know he doesn't like this pick as much. So just put it that way. Let's get <laughs> right into it, man. He's talking your... Kirk Cousins, and he's flop sweating. <laughs> what's your What's your first look here for a play of prop? Yeah. Okay, uh, Josh. If I were to ask you who the worst pass defense in the NFL is, who would you say? Well, it's kind of my job to know that, but if yeah. you're asking me personally, let me give you let me give you a specific number. Who do you think has given up the most passing yards in the NFL this year? Defense. I would guess that it's the Baltimore Ravens. You would be correct. It's okay. the Baltimore Ravens by a landslide. Wow. Over 2,300 yards thrown against. They have no communication whatsoever on the back end. Obviously, a new scheme, a new defensive coordinator, uh, some personnel that was built to maybe play the old way. I saw last week there were several plays where they were still yapping at what people should do. The ball was in play. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I don't think the Denver Broncos are actually a good football team. I don't. I think that they are uh, a good, bad team to steal a line from Bill Simmons. Okay. Right, they've beaten some really crappy teams. Their one good win is Tampa Bay. Hmm. So I'm not that big on the Denver Broncos, but I do know that Sean Payton doesn't half-ass it with Bo Nix anymore. He's letting him rip it a little bit. It's true. To whatever degree that's worth, he's letting him rip it a little bit. I'm not going Bo Nix, and I'm not taking the one and a half over touchdowns at plus 172. You can if you want. <laughs> But I like Cortland Sutton over 48 and a half yards. I'll even play it up to 55-ish because that's your number one receiver against the worst pass defense in the NFL. The way you beat them is over the top. You get them over the top. Now, it's not going to be a bunch of dink and dunk. It might only be three catches. But you're going to get 20, 30, 40 yards on those catches. Bo Nix has shown a propensity to try to push it down the field, particularly up the middle, attacking safeties, going in between cover three, cover four. I like Cortland Sutton over 48 and a half yards, and I'll play it up to 55 ish if I can get a positive number. I get it. I get it. They're a pissed off team. It doesn't seem like they can do anything about it, though, because the other team does not have a choice but to pass the ball right. as much as anything, right? There, it's like by about 50 yards per game that they're the best rushing, not even, not 50. I think it was to the like fourth best rush defense. They had like 50 yards fewer allowed than them. It's, it's a huge part of all of it. They're a pass funnel. There's not too much you need to say. They're 32nd versus uh, the pass. They're 30th versus wide receivers specifically, because if you want to be a tight end and get it against them, you can. Um, but on the outside is where you're going to beat them a lot more, too. So uh, I'd be staying away from like a Vele kind of play. Even Troy Franklin's been moved around a bunch. I think you just go with the big X and you just That's take right. Cortland Sutton um, to, to do his thing. Don't overthink this because he's too big and physical for it. Marlon Humphrey um, and for anybody else that's going to be coming at him in this one so I, I, I'm I'm with it I got poo-pooed off of Cortland Sutton by a couple people uh, I mean I didn't get poo-pooed off of it they were poo-pooing the bet but I made it um, because I'm in full agreement with you so stick I, to your I, gun I, I'll take it one step further like Baltimore is going to stop the run I think Baltimore is going to put up points I, yeah. I know a lot of people are very high on this Denver defense sure. I get it I, I'm not saying they suck but I do think that Baltimore is going to be coming out here gunning yeah because they're coming off of a bad loss but Jameis Winston, in between almost throwing interceptions, was able to beat them over the top. Jameis yeah. Winston had a good game statistically right. against the Baltimore Ravens because the Baltimore Ravens give up yards against the pass. Yeah, he looked Denver, good. Denver's run game isn't to a point where I think that they're going to have a chance to maybe have balance in this game. Yeah. Baltimore's offense is going to create a game script situation where Denver might have to be throwing anyway. Yeah. It just all signs point to Denver throwing the football and all signs point to their number one receiver having more than 50 flipping yards. Yeah. It doesn't feel sure. that hot of a take, but here Not I am. Not at all. 
Not at all. I was uh, trying to see if there's anything. Uh, I, I was looking at Mark Andrews while you're talking because I was like, is there going to be something on the other side? Because when you talk about that pass defense, but I, I think he's still got a low total. They're not bad versus tight ends by any means. But no. um, either way, no. For the other side of the ball, yeah, you, you target somebody. I, I agree with you. Bo Nix is letting it fly. I'm bigger on – I'm higher on Bo Nix than I think other people are. I, I don't mind a giant quarterback who does not have the accuracy issues that he seems to be given – there's some bad when they're bad throws, they're bad. I will say that. No doubt. Next. They're nasty. No doubt. And but I think like, a lot of people are holding on to the early season priors and haven't seen what he's been doing lately, best. which isn't yep. spectacular, yep. but it is more aggressive than this dink and dunk inaccurate crap we saw early in the season. Get this. He's 24 years old. He's a rookie. Those two things sound weird, but here yeah. we are. Yeah. Like he's figuring it out. Yeah. And he might have a very low ceiling ultimately as a quarterback but he's got a decently high floor and i think we've gotten to the point where now he's getting into the normal range of this is what bo nix is and bo nix is willing to test a defense down the field that's what you want to do against baltimore that's right. Yep. He's at least willing to throw it down there. Now, like that might mean some Nelson Aguilar and Rashad Bateman stuff, uh, yeah. maybe even more than Zay Flowers at times. But I even think Mark Andrews is going to continue to be a decent deep threat for him uh, on, on the other side. Not Mark. On Anderson, the other side, uh, play, yeah. playing the game. Yeah. And and also uh, Troutman is who I keep trying to say and say that Troutman had some silly catches last week. So yeah. it's, it's also him, the combination of him and Lucas Kroll. Not gr- just wow. saying there, there's weapons coming into play here for Bo Nix. Wow. I don't know why I know so much about the Denver Broncos, um, but Stay I know here. three of their tight ends for some reason. Um, so let me move on. Yeah, uh, because uh, I have a kind of <laughs> a nerd. Are, this is the depths of humanity right here. Let's, We're talking Broncos third a, tight end. Let's get away from just a gross, awful passing game. Right. Talk about one that has Joe Flacco in it. So we know it's going to be good. <laughs> and Joe Flacco is just going to keep throwing to Josh Downs because if That's you're right. Joe Flacco or you're Anthony Richardson, Richardson or your whomever else they would throw in is Gus Minshew still on the team like there's going to be people throwing to Josh Downs no Gus Minshew is going to be going under in uh for Vegas we'll talk about that later that's right um but for Josh Downs man what an impressive season so far I think I'm on long reception I'm trying to show receiving yards over 58 and a half is what I got it looks like 60 and a half you still get a 58 and a half minus 119 that's prize picks but um I got it for like minus 105 and it's mm-hmm. gotten bumped up so look I mean it it's not like with Anthony Richardson, he wasn't getting targeted. It's just Anthony Richardson is not an accurate quarterback yet. So we can't really so rely on Yeah. So he is but, both tired and inaccurate. It's a bad combination. <laughs> right. And consistently hurt, man. But this uh, this Joe Flacco stuff, when he comes in, you look at some of these games. Which ones do you think Joe Flacco played in, right? Nine, <laughs> 12 receptions right here. Eight receptions, nine receptions on 12 and nine targets. Um, catching most of those balls, not getting these two, three, five with like seven targets kind of thing and getting a lot of catchable balls as opposed to with Anthony Anthony Richardson, where he has a ton of unrealized air yards and a ton uh, of basically uncatchable balls. So um, he was actually uh, right next to Amari Cooper for a while in terms of unrealized air yards for a few weeks. And now he's actually had some realized air yards, which is why I like it. Um, and has gone over pretty consistently this season, as you can see as well. But the other thing here, just too, and I know you'll probably appreciate this, he's a zone beater. Um, and that's what you're going to need to have in this situation for for Josh Downs and company is like, that ball's got to come out pretty fast. We're going to be seeing, obviously, we know what Minnesota's going to be doing. It's just going to be blitzes. Um, and that's why they have the highest pressure rate. It's why they're, what they're, I think they're second now, actually, in blitz percentage, which is interesting mm-hmm. for Flores. But it's enough for, for him to need to get the ball out of his hands. I would imagine Brian Flores is like, sick you just took uh anthony richardson out and gave me statue joe flacco in the right. pocket like what, what do you make of that but he'll make fast decisions and yeah. ultimately it, it's more of a political thing than anything else as to why joe flacco is playing he's been the quarter better quarterback this year let's be clear about that yeah. not to say that he's been a good quarterback but he's been the better yeah. quarterback um there's nothing joe flacco loves more than a reliable possession receiver in the slot my goodness, he has made some guys some – well, he's made us some money doing that, and he's made some slot receivers some money doing that. Um, Josh Downs is going to be you know, getting off-man coverage against fire blitzes. He's the hot. And I'd play receptions strictly on this one. I, I'd be – what is the number on receptions? See that. Maybe some alt stuff. You got to get to basically get it to seven to make it worth it, but you're wow. still getting EV according to the numbers. There, there are. Th- this is why I hate receptions usually is because it's like it's it's since it's a one by one stat that you can't right. get more than one on each play. 
right. they, they'll put you at, at this awkward position of, do you want to drink yeah. the juice or do you want to take an absurdly high number 100%. for plus 120? And I usually, in these situations, maybe I'm risk averse in that sense. I don't know. No, you should but be. I'd rather I, I don't play like 1.4 units. Yeah, take the number, not the, the odds for sure. Yeah, I'm with you. So let, let's go with, you know, let's go with receiving yards, Josh Downs. I mean, I would love to say, here's an Alec Pierce for you. Go with a long reception there. Right. But I, I don't know about that one. Pittman is a viable play here, too, if you want to stack some stuff up. Um, I'll say this about the the Minnesota defense. What Brian Flores is doing is so interesting. He is blitzing a lot this year because they're playing what I call the conjoined triangles of success on the back end. So they have six-man coverages on the back. And what they're doing is on the outside corners, they're making quarterbacks guess if it's quarters or palms, which is are they – carrying up uh, yeah. to four or are they covering the flat just cover flat. two cover four would be another way of doing it it's a little more intricate than that but let's just call it two or four yeah and basically because the blitz is coming because there's going to be someone unblocked typically they're having to make hot reads if they're making a hot read to the outside the quarterback is having to guess if the cornerback is going to play flat or if he's going to go deep and there's no way of knowing until it actually happens so you see a lot of interceptions against the Minnesota Vikings on undercut balls, right? Your, your guy's going because you think, hey, you know, we're going to do a, a, you know, a 10-yard comeback. Yeah. Well, he's now underneath you. And yeah. uh, this is, you know, Brock Purdy got burned by A lot of teams are getting burned by it. Flores is trying to create chaos. The antidote to chaos is just being able to run the ball. Easier said than done when you're stacking a line of scrimmage. Literally, not just stacking the box. The line, line. of scrimmage. Playing a lot of cover zero. And the other thing too, the other thing that you can do is okay, well, let's make the pass game the run game. Right. And how do you do that? Bubble screens to your slot receiver, finding the place of off man coverage, getting yep. linebackers against receivers, tight end play. It's stuff that's close to the ball at the snap. Yeah. But does have a little bit of room to wiggle with. And uh, you know, I, I, I'm all in on downs. I, yeah. I love this pay. I'm kind of angry that I don't have it. <laughs> I think you know. Look, I mean, with Flacco in there, we're talking about eight, about eight eight receptions per game. It's not terrifying to say, yeah, I'm going to hit uh, over five and a half. I'm also just going to take seven plus, eight plus for for some alt money. Uh, just looking at his receptions, alt lines. If you wanted those. Real quick, what we're looking at here. Uh, the best number on five and a half is minus 140. Six, seven gets you plus 120. Man, this is a cheap ladder if you're trying to climb it. That's insane. Yeah. That's still not very much juice back on these receptions. He's going to get a ton of targets, but I still think the yards uh, are a better yeah. play. Maybe not necessarily laddering them, but let's get into play, play a prop number two for you here. Josh, I have a quarterback who's thrown an interception in 11 of his last 12 games. Okay, I got this. I got this. Uh, Andy Dalton. No. Not Andy. Uh, no, I actually I can't speak to anyone else because I only know this stat for the player that I'm talking about. So I was going to help guess. you out and make you look even better by guessing really bad quarterbacks as you then give me a, the name of a really good quarterback who's still. You mean the best one? The yeah. best one? Patrick best Mahomes, one. who has an interception, sometimes two, in 11 of his last 12 regular season games. And you're telling me that I can get plus money on him throwing an interception this week? Hold on. He has how many interceptions and how many what? He has an interception. In 11 of his last 12 regular season games. What's in the name of all that is good? He has an interception or two in every single game he's played this season. That's absurd. This is the best quarterback of all time. And you're giving me plus money on him throwing an interception. Sorry. I'm going to take it. These books don't know what they're doing. I'm sure they do. I'm sure that this (laughs) is the week where it doesn't happen. (laughs) I mean, every part of this... Stinks. Do you it have stinks. anything? Do you have anything in the way of Tampa Bay's defense? Uh, They're bad. They're bad help. at defense. Yeah. That yeah. that that is a reason. But here's the other thing that needs to be noted. Yeah. Kansas City's offensive weapons are not good. Oh no. And I and I think that everyone's like, oh, DeAndre Hopkins is coming in. That will fix it. Sure. Let's go with that. Yeah. Um. You know, Travis Kelsey's doing his late stage Gronk situation where he'll be ready come December, probably yeah. January. You know, I like Noah Gray. I like Christian Watson. Or, well, not Christian Watson. I love Christian yeah. Watson, but it, well, I like the white Watson. Yeah. Um, I, I like, you know, Kareem Hunt. I like some of these players. I like Xavier Worthy. You know who doesn't like them? Patrick Mahomes when he has to run a third and long. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is a situational football team because they don't have the ability to avoid third downs because their yeah. offense doesn't hum. They have to win with defense and situational football. 
Now that will change as the season progresses and Kelsey decides, okay, I'll play now. And Xavier Worthy has a better understanding of how to do anything but run a nine route or a drag screen. But yeah. like, as of right now, this is not a dynamic offense, which means that Patrick Mahomes, who again has interceptions in 11 of his last 12 regular season games and has thrown right. one or two every game this year, even against bad defenses, even against the Raiders, even against the Saints, again, it, he's forcing the issue in places because he has to, and yeah. there are teams that can pounce on that. Yeah. So I'm just going to play it because you're giving me – it's like we were talking about with anytime touchdowns. You're giving me Tyree Kill it plus money. I'm sorry. There's a principle that has to be a play here. Right. Patrick sometimes Mahomes, you just got to play math. Sometimes you just have to look at what has he done every game this year, throwing an interception. You're giving me plus money that he'll throw an interception? Like, yeah, yeah that, that seems fair. That seems fair to me. I like that the safeties are available as well. They've been hurt throughout um, for, for the Bucks here. Uh, Levante David being in would be really nice as well for, for some of that pass coverage in the middle of the field. But other than that, yeah, uh, they're a little bit healthier on the defensive side, of the, in the secondary anyway, than they have been, which is really helpful. Love that you get the the, the um, injury report pulling through on this one-stop shop here, outlier.bet. But yeah, no, this is, uh, this, this is going to be something that I, I agree. Like hit rate alone, if you want to talk about the matchup, whatever. You're, yeah, it's you're, almost it's matchup more agnostic. About, right, me. and it's more about the matchup aspect of it to me is more about who's on the field for Kansas City. Right. Right, and it's not the guys that you're used to uh, being on the same page. If anything, New Copians being in here for two weeks only lets you, feels like there's the opportunity for, for more turnovers. So totally. I like that. I have foreshadowed this bet for long enough. We've made fun of the Raiders for long enough without actually fading somebody on their team. Let's so fade. Let me think Gus, Gus Gardner. Is there a Gus Minshew? No, I'm going with Gardner. Gus Minshew uh, would be a great name, though. That seems like Gus's brother's name, or like maybe Gus is when he's being a certain type of way. Gardner feels like he's the better quarterback. He's been mm -hmm. Gus, though, this year. So I'm going to, not Gardner, Gus <laughs> Minshew the second, just so you know his dad has the same name as him. Oh, good to know. I didn't know <laughs> Gus Minshew the first, but it's good to know that uh, I hate Under that. Under two, hate that. I want to add the rush yards to it. Um, what's the regular pass yards? It's 219 and a half now. So it was 225 and a half is what this opened at um originally even before this uh 29 this changed recently but yeah this this was originally uh, a 25 Ooh. and a, yeah there we go 224 225 and a half is what it got bumped up to for a minute opening at 220 so i i like adding the rush yards because i don't know why they're there um it's not like the uh the cincinnati team has been giving you oh no they are that's why i'm sorry 30 second i was looking at something different oh they yeah the Bengals back. are egregious against the run but now they have their team back essentially like Rankins is mm -hmm. obviously a massive deal for the run game not that the Raiders were going to be capable of running the ball <laughs> worst running the offense well. in the history of the NFL right. um they got Hill back as well so both of them back on the D-line um this is going to be a gross game there's going to be run there's going to be rain uh that's coming down there's going to be probably not a lot of points we got a 46 and a half total I, I see that getting bet down continuously mm -hmm. as well um so I, I don't like the, the context of the game in the context of this sloppy, most likely sloppy game, do we not think Gardner Minshew is going to turn the ball over? He's got three <laughs> fumbles and eight picks. He's got eight picks this season already, yeah. right? Like uh, yeah. three fumbles on top of it. So it's it's Gardner. Well, it's I, I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. You might get Spencer Rattler in this game. That's uh, the issue. Because Spencer Rattler's out here performing so poorly that he gets benched before he threw an interception last week. That's true. That's true. But I don't, that actually is what I'm banking on. I was going to bring that part up as well. Guess who's? <laughs> I never thought I would say. This. Guess who's breathing down Gardner Minshew's neck? Desmond Ritter's in town. Desmond oh, Ritter. No. Desmond Ritter, the king, the king of the four yard a dot, is is here to 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 make a statement if you let him in the game and. Antonio Pierce doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't. No. He's floundering. I mean, no. so, he's got some cars to sell. I mean, and it could be that's tough. It could be Gardner uh, coming out by. I mean, look, one pick, maybe he's coming out. Two, Dunzo. No right. way he's still in this game. So if he goes three quarters, I don't think he's getting 234 and a half pass and rush yards combined. No, I'm I'm with you on that. I think that a lot of that number is a, an expectation of game script. Being yeah. that the Bengals are going to run them off the field, um, I think that people are overestimating the Bengals. I think without T. Higgins, probably right. Like it's not to say that I don't think that the Bengals will win comfortably. It's yeah. just to say that I don't expect the Cincinnati Bengals to have their act together at any point ever. That's right. not what they do. They yeah. are a chaos team that is a lot of fun sometimes. But uh, Garner Minshew is a chaos machine too. And you're, <laughs> what's the number we're getting on a turnover?
Oh, right. Yeah, probably not. I don't do they're giving it. Yeah, here's the INT. That is, oh, you can get that for minus 119. Oh, that's probably, yeah, so minus 120. Okay. Not terrible. Okay. You can play that. Yeah. I like that. And I, I, I love the under. I mean, I don't know if he's going to finish the game. Right. Uh, I think that Cincinnati's defense is, as you noted, uh, healthier. But also, I think that they're they're more talented than their numbers have indicated thus far. That's maybe right. maybe I'm delusional on that. I, I guess so. we'll find out. Yeah. But when I watch the Cincinnati Bengals play, I never think like, wow, you can just do anything you want against these dudes. Totally. Whereas yeah. when I watch the Raiders, I go, I don't know how these guys move the football. Yeah. Except for Brock Bowers, who I right. loved in anytime touchdowns. Love that. Yeah, I'm so with Brock. He's the it's 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 just good stats, bad team for this season for yeah. him, and then he'll continue to turn into the best tight end in football uh, as the others sort of wane. But go ahead, give me uh, numero three here for your final play. Okay, this is when the flop sweat kicks in here, Josh. Uh, yeah. I'm going to play a game of principle here again. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys are very bad at football. They, they won't have Micah Parsons by all accounts for this game. They have bad linebackers. They have a bad secondary. They have no pass rush. They have no ability to stop the run. I have to play Kirk Cousins over 249 and a half passing yards. I have to do it because <laughs> this is a guy who had 500 passing yards against Tampa. He's put up big numbers against bad defenses. He has put up middling numbers against anything that's competent on defense. Yeah. And I look at this Dallas defense and I go, find me the competence. Find me the person who's going to make Kirk Cousins move. Because if Kirk Cousins can just stand there, he's going to throw. Yeah. Now, and I think that there's also a game script element to this as well, to where, you know, Atlanta, sometimes they're on, sometimes they're off. But Dallas has just enough with CeeDee Lamb and Ferguson to make this game slightly interesting. Like, they're really bad, but they're not. We're getting blown out every week bad. Just every other week. Yeah. So... There's something to the fact that I don't think that Atlanta is going to be able to just put it in fourth gear and just say, we're going to run it with Bijan or more likely Tyler Algier again yeah. and again and again. Right. Because I do think that Dallas is going to force them to throw the ball a little bit more. And when they throw it, they're going to be getting big chunk yardage. Yeah. I like a Drake London play in this one. I like a Kyle Pitts play in this one. I like yeah. a Bijan Robinson all yards in this one. I love the Atlanta Falcons getting yards. I love the fact that Kirk Cousins can just stand there, you know, grab a grab a bar stool and, and throw something you know no one's gonna be knocking him down at all doesn't have yep. to move the achilles he can play on one foot this entire yep. game he'll be fine yep. um i don't love this number i don't love the 249 and a half i, I wish it was a 10 15 yards lower i'd feel a lot more comfortable because i'd say this is about a 260 to 270 game for kirk cousins so that's not a margin that i'm super comfortable with i like yep. to have a little bit more cushion wouldn't we all yeah I have it on me but i don't have it in this game <laughs> uh, yeah 249 and a half at 115 uh i'm gonna hold my nose and i'm gonna play it yeah no i have no problems with it um the, the game script like to your point i think is gonna be a lot more neutral than otherwise um this team is i th believe about 50 50 uh pass run like they, yeah. they definitely still give the ball to their running backs but uh and like you said it's usually tyler algier but yeah there's there's nothing that's gonna stop them uh, stop him necessarily from being able to throw especially to the outsides. It's, it's, Trayvon Diggs is in a bad place for sure. Uh, we saw that last week in San Francisco uh, when he went off on a media member. Just not, uh, vibes are low. That, that was the low vibes game of the week last year, uh, last week rather, and San so, Francisco. Let's also take into account then, okay, so we're coming back to game script. Let's get into some narrative here because that's what all great betters do. They think about narratives instead of numbers. And Dallas has to have it, right? Dallas is, is on a, uh, just in a bad place. They have to have a win. And they're going up against a team that that's going to give them more than they probably should. Maybe Dak and CD is a play here. I, I know that you had Ferguson as an anytime touchdown Ferguson, in our yeah. last video. I do think that Dallas, you think about their head coach, Mike McCarthy, like he's got to dial it up for this game. He's got to yeah. have his good stuff for this game. I don't think they hold anything back schematically on offense. And that only gives Kirk Cousins more opportunities to throw the ball instead of hand it off. Yep, for sure. I, I The disappointment for me, the biggest one is against Seattle. Other games were just not really like, and maybe a little bit of uh, New Orleans, but they had defensive touchdowns there, right? So there's some reasons for some of these unders here, including big wins um, or you can see much, much better they're passes. Slight, they're tight ones, right? And this yeah. is why I don't love this number. I wish it was a little bit Dude, lower. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I would have loved a, a 241 and a half, right? Because yeah. then I would have felt like I got a little bit of market advantage here. I'd love to get this 
I'd love to get this at even. This yeah. feels like a really good line. Understanding there's the juice you're getting at 115. Yeah. I'd understand it if it was at 10. I'd love it if it was even. What 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 can we play it up to to get it to even? What's the alt line to get it to yeah, even? Yeah, there's not there's not many available as a problem. Like if you want yeah. it, even at this is a prize picks play, I'm assuming. Yeah, minus 119 is gonna be a prize picks play. So right. there's not much even available, even at the uh the core number of 249 and a half. You still yeah. only have him on three books. I imagine there's some injury news right now that is happening probably while we're even talking about this. I think it's the impact. Micah Parsons thing, but it, there's yeah. no sign that indicates it all. Like, I don't think Parsons has practiced at all this week. Why would you yeah. just throw him out there? Even if he is out there, like what? It was, and yeah, and I'd actually love that. Him. I would love it if they played Micah Parsons in this game because I would expect nothing from him. No juice, no energy, nothing that's actually happening, but it might move down the line a little bit. Yeah. on the on this player prop to where now I feel a little bit more comfortable because right. if Micah Parsons plays that changes nothing for me when it comes to Kirk right. Cousins but it might change it for the market right and I mean look I know we all love to hate on the Cowboys I mean I'm a Giants fan for Christ's sake but more than that I just hate the Cowboys this is a list of a good football team on the injured list for this yeah. team. Yeah, um, if you wanted a 98 football team the Dallas Cowboys injured list every single one of these players would be uh, would be a welcome addition to most defenses almost every defense zach martin eh, maybe a little over the hill still be a welcome addition he had a pretty good um, game last week i think he's rounding in for yeah so this is this is this sucks for them i feel i feel no remo- I, oh no i, I love, it. love it i love um, it. yes I i'm like happy. stephen a smith walking into the set of first oh, take. beautiful give me aaron Rodgers sucking alongside the cowboys sucking i'm having a good season <laughs> no matter what the hell happens i'll tell you that right now so <laughs> i've lost the mortgage but i'm living the dream <laughs> but they suck too so it's better all right <laughs> Let me close it out oh, here. Being a nihilist is fun. Do you want? Do you want? I'll let you choose for me. What oh, should okay. I do? Should I go over? Because I got a Carolina Panthers over for you, baby. Oh, <laughs> why did you do this? Should I go over on Bryce Young or Chuba Hubbard? And before you answer Chuba, because why would you not say Chuba? Tell me, tell me the Bryce one, Young one. Because I thought it was bad enough that I'm taking Kirk Cousins at an inflated number compared to where he's normally gone. Are you giving me uh, Bryce Young passing touchdowns one? Like, what are we doing here? 184 and a half yards? You're an NFL quarterback. You can't get 185 passing yards? Show me what he's done this season. If we could pull no, 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 outlier no, 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 no. That. You got, excuse me, sir. You got to bet a bet based on the fact that you think it's a good bet. And you got to sometimes play the gut. This is this is, this is is the case. The, the legit case, if you want it. Now, look, Chuba is at 53 and a half rushing yards against what's been the worst rush defense in the league for five weeks in a row. It's been the second worst rush defense in the league all season in the Saints. So, yeah. look. You, but is the kid but, playing? Jonathan Brooks is going to play. I don't know how much he's going to eat. In, oh, I'm sorry. No, he's unlikely to play now. So this is this is there right back value to there. Yeah. So Jonathan Brooks looks like he's unlikely to play. He was on track to play. And literally before we started recording, um, there was a, an, an alert that came in that he was unlikely to play after no practice okay. today on Friday. Again, makes sense. Why so, would you play him? <laughs> so you can't play him. So you're going to talk about Chuba being owning 75 percent. Oh, and Derek Carr is playing. If you want that in favor of Bryce Young needing to pass the ball, maybe the Saints offense won't look look like absolute dog shit because they have a quarterback out maybe El Asico, this game. maybe um but the let me get to uh i was going to chew can we for, can we just for everyone's mental health not make a play in this game we could i mean because i don't think anyone should be subjected to watch this what part of football fandom though is relevant to mental health like how how are those two correlated in your mind well if you're a third party you know, it's fun to bet on somebody that you'd enjoy seeing win, That's or like true. at least there's a good team in there. Like, That's I don't want to be sweating out a Carolina Panthers New Orleans Saints Great game point. for a Chuba Hubbard over rushing yards prop Great when I have to now watch three straight hours of commercial filled garbage football right before an election in a swing state. Like, I don't want to watch that so that I can find out if Chuba Hubbard is going to hit my rushing yard. Counterpoint. Top. I would if, rather pull out my toenails. Counterpoint. If you want to numb your brain and not have it be, you know, exposed to whatever's going to happen on November 3rd and 4th this year. Oh, I think, watching, I watching think what you're describing is clinical per- depression. That's what I think you're describing. Just lay in bed. Read a book. <laughs> Take a vacation. Look, Chuba is now at 64 and a half yards. Banister up your butthole. Like anything but this.
but since we we, since we started recording is when Jonathan Brooks got listed out. So 64 and a half takes me away from this. I was well, I was willing to get 53 and a half because I was like, that's a first half cash. I don't care. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know if that's going to be the case anymore. The You're Bryce sick, young, the, the Bryce young thing is in a way for clicks. It's if you want to be good, you've either got to like in a media, you just got to be either terrible or awesome. Right? We're you moving the over. Even... We're moving the Overton window here. That's right. We're right into the Overton window. Everything, exactly. everything has to be just at the most extreme. Therefore, uh, even uh, moderately extreme takes seem moderate. Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. But but yeah. like that's okay. I love I'm, our society. I'm that's okay with one. numbing. Like you've just you got to keep going up because if you're not going yeah. up, you're going down, baby. Well, we're you going way down. down if we're taking Bryce Young passing yards. So here's the here's the look. If you want to under. Right if you want to take a Bryce Young over 100, I'm not going to take a under 184 yards on a. On you should a do it on. Uh, we're men of principle. You should take it on principle of the under. Yeah, this is almost this is almost stinky in a way because it's like Correct. 184. This this defense is so bad. You don't think you can get more than 180? Well, then I would take the under. I guess. Yeah, yeah I still like the over. I mean, I don't like okay. it. No, wait. I said like. I didn't mean that. I just think this is a, an opportunity. Is you what I think. he's going to pass. You prefer the play that is the over. Uh, let's just go through Bryce Young's game logs. He had 224 yards last week. Thank you. Started 10 for 12 in that game. Yeah. Uh, uh, otherwise, oh, uh, against uh, Patrick Sertan. Uh, well, come on. Like, let's cool it with the Patrick Sertan talk. All right. Bad man to man player. Um, right. Legitimately, like bad at it. Great zone cover, but you yeah. know. Great zone cover. That's Good what luck they for play. that. They played earlier this year. It was uh, it was September 8th. Uh, Bryce Young went 13 for 30 for 161 yards. So he was only 25 yards off, you're telling me. <laughs> has he improved at all since? Probably not, but here's the thing. My like, man has a QBR of 19.3 out of 100. 161 yards in this game. Not great. You're right. Has he improved? Potentially. Is Marshawn Lattimore playing? Adebo's already out for the season? Definitely. Their nickel corner? What do you want? Uh, Paulson? I, I, like, uh, Josh, we're taking it. We're taking it. You're trying to talk me out of. We're taking it. Listen, all listen. signs, all signs point to no. The whole world is saying he can't do it, and I'm saying he's coming in for a buck ninety Bro. and four interceptions. Let's go. That's what I'm saying. I'm ready for it. So they're going Andy Dalton left hand only in this game. <laughs> Andy Dalton's been coaching this kid up, by the way. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. On him at every turn. I don't know if it's going to help or not. I don't know if he's the QB of the future, but I like 185 yards for him in this game. Yards. Such a such, such a nasty way to end this uh, this video. That otherwise I think we liked a lot. I think we feel very strong about four of our six picks. We gave you the, the last two because we we're having yeah. a little bit of fun, um, but that's what we do, right? We like that fun, right? Watch you know those be the only two that hit. Yes, exactly. That would be that's that's NFL betting in a nutshell. So we're going to close it there. Appreciate the time from you, Deets, as always. Hoping to have you back week 10 if you'll uh, come back on a show that just picked Bryce Young over passing yards. Well, if it hits, I'm back. And if it doesn't, we're going to have some serious conversations about maybe institutionalizing. Okay, that's fair. Next week we come back and we decide whether or not I need to be hospitalized for my mental health. So appreciate y'all tuning in. We are going to be coming back, like I said. I'm going to be having NBA videos this weekend as well. Nice. Also got tutties going on. I am up about 10 units to start this young NBA season. Just want to throw that out there. So if anybody's interested in catching those plays, let you can jump in. And until we see you next, happy betting. Happy betting.